Ah, the 20s. Such a great time to be alive, right? You have a whole future to live and prepare for, and there are quite a number of expectations. One of the biggest things you want to get right as early as you can is your financial habits. Doing so will help set you up for great things. Welcome to The Eighth Wonder, a channel dedicated to making compound interest your best interest. It is very easy to feel like you have all the time in the world to do whatever you please in your 20s and that you can catch up later on in life. I'm here to tell you that the sooner you get into these habits, the better your financial future will be. Starting with, number one, saving early and consistently for retirement. Now I get it. Why would you worry about something that's some 40 odd years away, right? The truth is, you don't have control over every aspect of your life and you don't know what life may bring. You also don't have to wait until you're really old for you to retire. If you plan right, you can retire at any age you feel appropriate as long as you are making enough money to be able to do so. The earlier you start saving and investing for retirement, the more time your money will have to grow through compound interest. Even small contributions made consistently over time can make a big difference in the long run. An added benefit of putting money away for retirement is the tax deductions you get. This leads me to number two, creating and sticking to a budget. Knowing where your money is going and creating a plan for how you spend it is essential for financial success. A budget can help you identify areas where you can cut back on expenses and redirect that money towards saving and investing. In order for you to have any money to save and invest, you need to be living within your means and budgeting is a great way of making sure that you are able to do so. When done right, a budget can help you become more disciplined with your money so that you don't YOLO your way into debt. Speaking of debt, number three, pay off any high interest debt as soon as possible. Credit card debt is one of those kinds of debts. It can be a financial burden that can take years to pay off. It's important to prioritize paying off this debt as quickly as possible to avoid accruing large amounts of interest. Learn what the best method for paying down your debt as quickly as possible is and make sure to apply it as aggressively as you can. The longer you spend owing, the more you'll ultimately pay because you'll have compound interest working against you instead of for you. The best thing overall though is to avoid bad debt. Far too many people fall into the trap of thinking that they can always pay back later only to realize later on that they actually can't afford to make the repayment. Instead of taking up unnecessary debt, what you should be doing is number four, building an emergency fund. An emergency fund is a savings account set aside for unexpected expenses such as medical emergencies or job loss. It is important to have enough money saved up to cover at least three to six months of living expenses in case of an emergency. Life is unpredictable, so you always want to financially insulate yourself as much as you can so that when things go south, you are prepared. If anything, COVID has definitely highlighted to many of us how important emergency funds are, so start working on building up an emergency fund. And also, number five, Invest in a diversified portfolio. Diversifying your investments across different asset classes such as stocks, bonds and real estate can help reduce risk and increase the likelihood of achieving your financial goals. I've spoken quite a bit on this topic on previous videos so you can go watch them and we can call it a day. Just kidding. Do watch them though if you haven't. Diversification is essential in setting yourself up for a good financial future and potentially making passive income. Diversification in investing helps to reduce risk because only investing in one thing can be dangerous. If the one company you've invested in does not do well, you will find yourself in financial trouble. But if you invest in a diversified index fund like the S&P 500, you have next to no risk at all. Given the chances of all 500 companies in the index going under are next to zero. A good way of making sure your investments are well-rounded is by number six, continuously educating yourself about personal finance and investing. The world of personal finance and investing can be complex. It's important to continuously educate yourself in order to make informed decisions about your money. Information can be found in books, on the internet, from other people, and yes, on YouTube. 
And one of the best places to find that information is on this channel. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, because you will find a lot of useful information here. One of the most powerful ways that you can educate yourself is by taking action. By so doing, you'll be able to get a better understanding of how things work. While you're at it, you should, number seven, avoid lifestyle inflation. Lifestyle inflation is when you increase your spending as your income increases. It is important to avoid this habit as it can lead to overspending and make it harder to reach your financial goals. This is a very easy trap to fall into. It is natural to always want something better than what you currently have. And for most people, as soon as they make a bit more money than they used to, they will want to improve one thing with the other. What used to be good enough can all of a sudden feel old and outdated. If you delay gratification and save and invest more every time you earn more, you can not only beat lifestyle inflation, but you can also beat actual inflation. Closely tied to this is number eight, living below your means. Living below your means means spending less than what you earn. This allows you to save money and invest more, which can help you achieve your financial goals faster. This sounds simple, but isn't always. There may be times when you are impulsive and you want to buy things you don't need. A good way to make sure that you are able to do this is by sticking to a budget and identifying things that you normally spend on unnecessarily and start cutting down on those. You can also identify triggers that may cause you to spend unnecessarily and look for ways to avoid them. Once you're doing this, you can, number nine, avoid unnecessary financial risks. It is important to be aware of the risks associated with different financial products and investments and to avoid taking any more risk than you are comfortable with. One of the biggest risks you can take is bad credit. People tend to want to keep up with their peers, which is one of the biggest reasons for taking out credit and getting into debt. The only person you should be competing with is yourself. Always analyze and determine whether or not you understand what you're doing and whether or not it is worth it. Also, stay away from get-rich-quick schemes that can rob you of your future potential returns. Consider doing number 10, tracking and growing your credit score. A credit score is a numerical rating used to determine your credit worthiness. It is used by lenders like banks to determine the risk of lending you money, the loan term, and interest rates. The score is usually calculated on factors such as payment history, outstanding debt, length of credit history, and types of credit used. It usually ranges from 300 to 850, and the lower your credit score is, the bigger the risk you are, and therefore, the stricter the loan terms and higher the interest rates on your loan will be. By tracking and growing your credit score, you can better your chances of getting approved for loans, getting better loan terms, and good interest rates, as well as peace of mind knowing that you don't have to pay so much more on your loans than you should. One more thing you can do is number 11, seeking professional advice as needed. If you have specific goals or are unsure about how to manage your money, it can be helpful to seek the advice of a financial professional. They can provide you with personalized advice that can help you create a plan to achieve your financial goals. That being said, it is still your money that you're dealing with, so it's important to have an understanding of whatever it is that they recommend. Whether you're in your 20s or not, these 11 habits can help you take control of your finances and help you to get to your financial goals quicker. The advantage of learning and applying these earlier on is that you have way more time to use them to your benefit than, say, someone in their 40s or 50s. That being said, it's better late than never. If there's any other habit that you feel like I left out, let me know in the comment section below. If you found value in this video, then please leave a like and share the video with a friend. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and make sure to click on the notification bell so you stay informed whenever there's a new upload. Thanks for watching, hope to see you on the next video, but until then, stay invested.